um, you're all welcome to our day eight of um, IGCSE Geography one question per day session. So this is day eight. And in day eight, we're going to be looking at earthquake and volcanoes. So we want to look at earthquake and volcanoes quickly. Now, here we have, um, is a question four though. Uh, now, say study figure 4.1, which is a map of the earth tectonic plates, some of which are labeled. Okay, so some of the plates are labeled here. Now they say X is a, is a, uh, is labeled on a divergent or constructive plate boundary. Now draw two arrows on figure 4.1 to show the direction of movement of South American plate and the African plate. Now they say they are both divergent. They are divergent plate boundary. So the divergent plate boundary, they are moving away from each other. So it will be an arrow moving this way and another arrow moving this way, moving away from each other. That's all. Now, explain why volcanoes erupt at divergent or constructive plate boundary. Now, in divergent plate boundary, two plates are moving away from each other. So this diagram is a sample of how a divergent plate boundary look like. Two plates moving away from each other, which will create a gap and allow volcano to erupt. So simple. Uh, plates pull apart or separate from each other so magma will not escape uh, through the gap uh, to fill it up so causing um, a volcano that's on divergent or constructive plate boundary now why is labeled on a convergent or destructive plate boundary explain why plate movement causes volcanoes to erupt at why the why they are talking about here is this so we are told that this is a destructive plate boundary so they are moving towards each other or convergent now so this diagram try to explain what happens in a convergent plate boundary so two plates move towards each other one is oceanic the other one is continental so the oceanic plate will move beneath the continental plate because it is heavier and more dense so creating a subduction zone which is this zone here so as it moves down, the heat from the mantle uh, and friction will melt the uh, oceanic plates, leading to the formation of more viscous lava. If uh, magma, sorry, if there is a crack on the earth crust, the volcano can actually erupt. So simple. So plates move towards each other. That will give you one mark. So subduction occurs. Subduction is when the denser or heavier oceanic plate move under uh, the continental plate now the crust will melt so magma will be created as it melts due to heat from the mantle it create magma is created and the magma will build up uh, leading to more pressure so the pressure pushed out through cracks or fractures on the earth cross leading to what a volcano eruption that's all now they said z is labeled on a conservative plate boundary describe the process uh, which may result to an earthquake in the region around z so we are z um here yes this is x this is y this is z so in a conservative plate boundary uh, the two plates are moving um parallel to each other they're moving side by side each other now, because of that, they get locked up and that will lead to friction and the friction will lead to the build up of pressure. And once there is any sudden movement, that can actually lead to the release of seismic wave causing an earthquake. So simple. Uh, this is it moving side by side each other. So this is what will happen. The plates move in different or opposite direction uh, along alongside each other. So slide past each other. So friction occur as it slide past each other and it gets stuck and sticked uh, so pressure will build up and once the pressure is overcome or the pressure is released uh, seismic or shock wave or vibration will be sent throughout this earth surface so that's it that's how earthquake occurs so we've just described in this video the two major ways in which volcanoes occur and the ways in which earthquake occur now here we have the b part of the question which is figure 4.2 for question number four um i included this cardinal point here to help explain 
uh, how you can do what is called a relative describe relative um, location in terms if they ask you to describe distribution of anything now the first thing is you should be able to use a key to interpret the map so we have a key here uh, the key so we know that this pink or how is it called color represent lava flow the green here is a forest then we have buildings in between the lava flows and we have roads also so the first question is study figure 4.2 insert a map showing the area around the cumbri viaga volcano in la palma now part of the canary island and this volcano erupted in 2021 now describe the location you see describe the location of the area affected by the lava flow from the Cumbri Viaja volcano. So, three marks. Um, this volcano, the Cumbri Viaja volcano, erupted here. And um, the lava flow is what we can see here. So, it's quite simple. So, from here, I found out that the lava flow is what? Westward. The lava flow is westward. Now, the lava flows down into the where? Atlantic Ocean. It passed through areas such as you call names La Laguna, um, La Capito, whichever. Just that's it. That will give you a mark. Now, so west of the volcano, westward. Now, between volcano and the Atlantic Ocean, okay, it goes to the ocean, yeah, from distance of five to seven kilometers and a width of two to three kilometers. It covers settlements such as. So, even without putting the distance and the width, you get your three marks. So, um, you see, like how will you calculate the distance in length and in width? Now, this is also quite easy. You get your ruler, measure, you can measure from this point where it gets to the Atlantic Ocean down to where it starts and use your key here, your scale here, to now know the distance, the length, then the width. You can do something like this. You can get the width. Now, if you check, the answer is in range. So, your answer will be within those ranges too. Now, they say describe the problem caused for people by volcanic eruption. Problems. Um, even from this diagram, you can begin to look at certain problems. Because, obviously, road is destroyed. Um, buildings is de are destroyed. Um, but here, they didn't say environment. They say people. So, you should be careful when you mention forest. Um, so roads destroy, building destroys, uh, destroy, um, can lead to death of people and destruction of properties. It can affect their workplace and the rest. So it's, there's a lot of impact of volcanic eruption. So this is a loss of life. Um, the ash cloud or fumes uh, can cause health problem, damage to homes, uh, loss of possession, affect road, railway, block, it affect communication damage to public buildings and uh, things like water get polluted uh, loss of electrical power livestock or farm animals will also be killed land that is used for uh, agriculture will be destroyed so there's a whole lot damage to workplace uh, disrupted by widespread ash cloud and cost of repair now because if you mentioned for us here it is not people that is environment now they say describe the problem caused by for people by volcanic eruption. I didn't get this. Describe the problem caused for people by volcanic eruption. Okay, this is it's repeated. Sorry. Um, it's a repeated question. So let's just move. Now, explain why people live close to a named volcano you have studied. This is a case study. Now, the case study we use here is Mount St. Helens. So you can pause and read through it to understand how to answer the question. Now, the region around Mount St. Helens is rich in timber because... So if it's rich in timber, people will be there because it provides job rich in timber, uh, which is lucrative for the lumbing industry, thereby providing what jobs that makes it a developed point to max um, for the local community, which will improve their income and living standard. Now, the Mount St. Helens National Monument is also a major tourist attraction that will give you two mark. Um, now, the volcano is also a significant site for scientific research and education. Also, the residents have deep-rooted connection to the land because they have lived there all their lives for many generations. Lastly, the region around Mount St. Helens offers stunning scenery 
for outdoor recreational opportunities that will definitely give you your seven marks because you give um you mention place specific features like the national volcanic monument um which are the which are, which other stuff we may <coughs> mentioned around so with that and all the points and how they are developed you get your mark so thank you have a nice day see you on day nine